All right, we're recording and I'll keep trying to get us onto Facebook Live, but if you wanna go ahead and proceed, go ahead and proceed. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 4th, 2021 Equity and Empowerment Advisory Board meeting. We will call this meeting to order at 6.38 p.m. And I will ask Ms. O'Brien to please call the roll. Thank you. Um, Rabbi Cohen? Here. Ms. Holland? Present. Reverend Lee? Present. Ms. Penn? Mr. Rhodes? Mr. Rhodes? He, he is here, I see him. Um, I think maybe he might be frozen. frozen. Dr. Downey? Present. Mr. Wanson? Present. Council member Bespich? Here. Vice Mayor Whiteboy? Here, and a quorum is present. So welcome everyone to um, our March meeting. We have a lot to cover this evening. I'm really excited. We also have our mayor joining us this evening and I would like to call on our mayor for a few words. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. And let me thank everybody for taking the time out of your schedules and making the sacrifice to be a part of of something that I think is very significant in our city. And I think will, will help us as we go forward. You know, we, uh, as I stated back in August of last year, uh, we acknowledge the challenges that we face as a result of centuries of racism and which was present in our country and even right here in Roanoke. Uh, our city's history, which includes lynchings, redlining, urban renewal, monuments to hatred uh, for a number of years. And we on council have really worked to, to try to address these. And there have been some difficult conversations that we've had with the survivors of urban renewal, which have taken place in our community. And, uh, and we recognize through that, that much more is needed and some action is required. Uh, and that's something I like to talk just a little bit about equity in action. Uh, so um, what you're doing is going to guide us as, as you all will come back with recommendations to us on council, but it's going to really help us because what we want to do in our city is that every decision, whether it be a transportation decision, land use decision, housing decision, made as we go forward as a city, we want to consider how it either helps or hurts those in our community before we act to ensure everyone in our city has the opportunity to live and be part of a safe and vib vibrant community and to have access to success regardless of the skin color or code. And so uh, we've created this equity and empowerment uh, advisory board, which will appoint residents and you all have been appointed to, to help us identify existing policies and practices that either result in inequity or uh, inhibit empowerment and recommend how to rid or overcome these policies. Uh, I've, my screen has all of a sudden been covered. In, uh, in August of 2020, city council voted to remove the, the Lee Monument, as you all know that, from its place of promise. No longer would that monument honor a history we know to be unworthy of such that honor, of an honor. And I acknowledge these actions represents, that represent just the beginning of what is necessary to address racism and promote equity, but they are genuine and meaningful actions. And so together, 
and this community will continue to advance on those goals and ensure everyone has the opportunity to participate in the success of our great city uh, and experience that success. For what you do is very important to us and I'm encouraged by uh, your participation and the ideas and thoughts that we'll be discussing and coming up with as we go forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and we are certainly appreciate you joining us today. Before we go any further, I just want to clarify for some of the folks who are calling in. I am, I've gotten a couple of text messages. Um, people want to know, do they need to call in or are they actually in the room um, to, to come on? Um, in particular, Dotsie Clifton and um, I don't know that other number, but do they need to do anything different, um, Ms. Bradbury, or, or should they just hold tight? They will hold tight and they will be able to hit star six when I allow them to speak. Right now it's a webinar platform so they can hear you all. And then when it's their turn to speak, we'll unmute their microphone. Okay. And so they also heard that instruction. So they should know what to do. So again, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for joining us. We appreciate it. And I will go to item number two, approval of the minutes from our February 4th meeting. Um, I am hoping that you all have gotten those minutes um, via... Uh, email or electronically, however, um, they were sent to you, but I'm sure they've been sent by now. And I need a motion um, to accept those minutes. So moved. Second. That was um, Rabbi Cohen uh, moved, and um, I think Ms. Holland uh, second. Is that correct? Uh, no. Oh, well, okay, Ms. Downey, <laughs> Dr. Downey. Okay. Um, is there any uh, correction? Are there any corrections or uh, anything that we need to do? Any modifications to those minutes? Okay, well, I will ask Ms. O'Brien to please call the roll. You're muted. Brad I. Cohen. Um, I'm going to abstain since I was not at the meeting. Ms. Holland. Yes. Reverend Lee? Yes. Ms. Penn? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? Dr. Downey? Yes. Mr. Watson? Yes. Council Member Bespich? Yes. Vice Mayor White Boyd? Yes. And the minutes have been approved. So we will go on to item number three new business and before we go into the appointment of the members and, and the subcommittees, I would like for Mr. Cowell to just give us just a brief update on the EEAB and um, how we developed this board and how we came up with the different facets. Sure. Thank, thank you, um, Ms. White Boyd. And I will be very brief because um, most of you have heard this, but this is for others that have may have joined us. And it also hopefully sets the stage for what you're about to do um, with the committee appointments. So as you all um, know, and as the mayor has mentioned, of course, the city council established the, um, the equity and empowerment advisory board, and it directly came out of the um, a call for action in the comprehensive plan, which was itself recently adopted by um, the city council. And so inside that comprehensive plan, there are really two, um, two things, I'll call them, that uh, interweave throughout the entire document. One is on health and one is on equity. And so that interwoven equity is what, again, initiated the concept of, of this particular board. It also went further in identifying five different priority areas. And inside each of those priority areas lay, uh, included a, a host of other actions that are in need of being developed further. Uh, when this board was established, the leadership of the board concluded that the best way to advance on each of those priorities and those lists of things that need to be developed further from what's in the comprehensive plan is to form five subcommittees or five committees. And so the, those committees are around each of those topics. That's why you'll see topics around um, poverty and trust and so on. Those come directly out of the comprehensive plan language that this board is tasked with advising the, the council on. So these committees, which uh, at your last meeting, 
you appointed um, board members to actually serve on that committee. And now you're looking to appoint citizens that have sought uh, or have provided application to be on um, these committees. And so what they'll do is again, they'll continue to work on helping expand the work of the board. And then ultimately ideas that come out of those efforts will be presented to the city council for consideration um, in changes in practices, policies, or standards. So, so that's the purpose of this. The, um, the, the executive committee of the, um, or the executive members of this board actually met and reviewed all of the names that were received in application and the information that accompanied those. And they have prepared from that a list of recommended um, appointments. And that's what you all have in front of you. So just wanted to give you that little bit of context as to how the board came about and why we have these committees and what their charge ultimately is. Um, at the end of the meeting, I'll come back and talk about kind of next steps with those, those committees. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kyle. I appreciate it. Um, before I uh, call out the list of recommend recommendations, I would like to say that we received so many applications. And I think that's really a good thing um, because it tells us that there are a lot of people in our city that are interested in what we're doing and would like to be a part of it and are willing to help you know, make Roanoke an even better place. So I just want to thank everyone that applied because we have retained your and we are going to be calling on you to further assist us because this is a lot of work. You know, it's it's a good it's good work, but it's going to be a lot of work, and we're going to need all of your assistance. So if you did not make a subcommittee, we will still be reaching out to you to help us as we go along in this process. So thanks again for doing that. And now I would like to call out the names that we are recommending for the each of these subcommittees. The committee is trust. In that committee would be Patisse Holland, Chair, Elder Downey, myself, Mary Bishop, Grace Church, Courtney Craggett, and David Harrison. That will be the, the subcommittee for trust. Um, okay, uh, I see Tiffany has it up there. And the break the cycle, Robin Mitchell, Chair, Rabbi Cohen, Jarrell Rhodes, Sheon Baker, Dr. Deneen Evans, Javon Tucker, and Aaron Washington. The Subcommittee for Neighborhood Choice, Gloria Manns, Chair, Reverend Lee, Angela Penn, Amazetta Anderson, Alicia Grubb, Ebony Harrington, and Bernard Johnson. Subcommittee on Inclusive Culture, Rachel Rulin, Chair, Peter Wanson, Lori Baker Lloyd, Phoenix Kasi, and Reverend Oki Ahu Salim, and Kathy, I'm sorry, Katie Zawacki. The Subcommittee on Service Delivery, Reverend Lee Chair, Council Member Bestpitch, Ms. Penn, John Camacho, Marlene Hamlet, Tiffany Helm, and Courtney Smith. So these are the recommendations. And I will need a motion to accept. Madam Chair, I move that the recommendations be approved as read. Second. Ms. O'Brien, do you, do you mind to, we have a, a first and a second. Do you mind to call the roll? Rabbi Cohen? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Reverend Lee? Yes. Ms. Penn? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? Yes. Dr. Downey? Yes. Mr. Watson? Council Member Bespich? Yes. Vice Mayor Whiteboy? Yes. And congratulations to all of you that were recommended for these subcommittees and we will be following up with you after this meeting so that we can start our work on this very, very important endeavor. At this time, I think we can move into our public Madam hearing. Madam Chair, before we do that, I would like to move that we waive the residency requirement for Dr. Deneen Evans on the subcommittee on Break the Cycle of Okay, Poverty. she apparently missed, uh, okay, Dr. Evans is not a resident. Um, are there any other names that you, you recognize that may not be residents? I thought we did, very, uh, did a very good job of trying to make sure that all of the recommendations were residents, but we have one exception. All, all the others are residents. Uh, Dr. Evans will be very helpful in looking at 
education issues and breaking the cycle of poverty. So I waive that residency. Second. There's second. It's been moved and properly seconded. It's there. Um, I guess we would. Um, is there any discussion or everybody understands why we're doing that? Okay. Uh, Ms. O'Brien, will you please call the roll? Rabbi Co. Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Reverend Lee? Yes. Ms. Penn? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? Yes. Dr. Yes. Downey? Mr. Wanson? Yes. Council Member Bespich? Yes. Vice Mayor Whiteboyd. Yes, and thank you so much, Mr. Best Pitch, for bringing in that to my attention because she will definitely be an asset to the committee. Um, at this time, we are going to try to get through the public hearing as quickly as we possibly can um, because I understand we have a number of uh, callers waiting to make their comments. And I think Ms. O'Brien, you're going to be announcing the callers as they come in. Yes, I'm going to do that. And Ms. Bradbury is going to unmute you um, to yeah, and, so um, that you just can speak. One one point of order, um, Ms. White Boy, would you mind explaining kind of the uh, the time limit that will be that you all have selected for each sure. of the speakers? Because that way, as Tiffany keeps the time and she'll call, it, they'll know why. <laughs> Thank you. They'll know what. I'm happy to do that because we have such enthusiasm. We are going to have uh, people call in and, and the first order of business would be the name change for Lee Plaza. So the callers that you will hear uh, coming in now will be uh, addressing the name change for Lee Plaza. And we're going to allow each of them two minutes because of the number of, of callers that we have waiting to, to comment. So you will have two minutes and the first few callers will be addressing the name change for Lee Plaza. Ron Lax. On, hello. Yes. Uh, Hi. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I'm calling in uh, to throw uh, my grandmother, Henrietta Lacks, in the mix. Uh, I'll, I'll, my family would be really honored if, if uh, in Lee's Plaza, they would put a plaque of her since she was born in Roanoke. Ron, this is Vice Mayor White Boyd. Hi, how are you? Thank you for calling hey, in. Boy. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for calling in. So you're you're saying you want a plaque because we're talking about a name change. So are you interested in the name being changed to um, to your grandmother's name? Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Since she was born in Roanoke, and I, I think that they don't have nothing of uh, Henrietta Lacks in uh, Roanoke yet. I'm not, not sure. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That'd gotcha. be a good start. Thank you for calling in. I, I know you're calling from uh, Maryland or someplace like that. Thank you, Ron, for calling in. We appreciate that. And we will certainly give it full consideration. And thank you all for listening to me. Thank you. Oxy Clifton. I don't know if I did that, so I hate saying it. Ms. Clifton, you can hit star six to unmute. You are unmuted. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, you'll need to turn down your volume on your computer or Facebook if you were watching that. Okay, got it. Is that better? Does that work? That's better. This says I'm muted. Oh, you're good. We can hear you, Dotsie. Okay. All right. Born in Roanoke in 1920, Henrietta Lacks has come to be known worldwide because of her cells, which gave birth to some of the most significant and widespread medical advances in history. Lacks is remembered both for the HeLa shells, cells, which they came to be called, which advanced medicine profoundly, yet also for how her cells were obtained and used without permission or reward for either herself or her family. The fact of these cells 
which have provided so much hope and healing throughout many generations also illustrates the exploitation experienced by marginalized citizens in our country, a condition which our our nation must recognize openly before racial healing can occur. To memorialize Henrietta Lacks in the naming of this significant of this civic square would make a strong statement of our city striving to become a beloved community for all of our citizens. A strong statement of Roanoke's commitment to equity and empowerment. Thank you, Dotsie. We appreciate it. Aaron Ewer. I'm here, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great, hello everyone. Um, I'm Aaron Ewart representing uh, my father who does not know that I'm here, uh, Vern Ewart. He used to be the city manager from 1978 to 85. I'd like to say hello to Peter Watson. I see his familiar face. Vern Ewart was hired in 1978 when downtown Roanoke, their neighborhoods and the city's financial condition were in severe, having severe problems. Uh, with the help of the citizens, the city council and the city staff, they created a citizen participation system never before seen in the US. Some of his economic development uh, complements like Valley View Mall was 850,000 square feet, now twice that, helping Roanoke regain its retail center in West Virginia. He created the Regional Convention and Visitors Bureau. He created the Roanoke Regional uh, uh, Economic Development Partnership. He helped expand the airport of 900 feet with the new terminal design. He created the new industrial technology park on 460, which is now home to a thousand plus jobs and a lot of tax revenue. He helped reduce the real estate uh, tax from $1.60 down to $1.28, which used to be the second highest real estate tax in Virginia. He, of course, is well-known Design 79. It was the process the first time in U.S. history where they called in, the, the citizens were able to call into a live commercial TV in prime time and give their ideas on what they thought the new downtown should be. The $15.5 million uh, bond, city investment generated over $300 million in private investment, 60 new retail establishments, which helped rehab 2 million square feet of existing buildings, and also the market square, which was totally redone and not torn down. He helped redo the farmer's stalls and businesses, helped recreate center in the square. The city market was designated the first historic district in the city. He was also part of the bridges, which we named the Roanoke River and Railroad Historic District, which was the 13th created, not but about five years ago. He helped renovate Elmwood Park, the library. He saved the public buildings like Jefferson High School, the old post office, the old municipal building, helped build the new courthouse helped build the war memorial where Lee Plaza is. He created the committee and he chose that site and closed down that road. When he was at the Explore Park, of course, he also had the master plan to upgrade 35 of 38 parks, created River's Edge Sports Complex, and was also responsible for creating the Greenway Master Plan of the Explore Park with Jones & Jones out of Seattle, which is now our most well-known asset in Roanoke. He helped create the Neighborhood Partnership, which was a national model for citizen participation including Ms. Florine Thornhill, who was recognized by President Clinton at the White House ceremony. In managing his organization at the city, he integrated the city workforce, including the police and the fire department. He hired women in leadership. He hired the first planning, black planning director and the first two black heads of the personnel department. He provided equity training where he had civil rights and equity training for a thousand employees and would not tolerate sexual harassment or discrimination. Some of his awards include the International City Management Association. In 1982, he was deemed the Outstanding Manager Innovator Award, basically deeming him the best city manager in the world. He was recognized by the, and given an award by the National Trust for Historic Preservation, Personal Commendation, one of 20 national commendations. He was also recognized by the Roanoke Magazine from 74 to 79 as the Platinum Visionary Award. Of course, he founded the Explore Park. 
He was a mastermind of our new downtown and the bridges development, which we were able to get $40 million installed, which will help support the hospital, the medical school and research center. And I'll read you a quote from two years ago when the Roanoke editorial board put together the 40th anniversary, an article about the 40th anniversary of Design 79. When Roanoke Ford, of course, uh, Roanoke Ford Council pushed out the city manager and hired a young dynamic replacement, Vern Ewart. Ewart's aggressive style was very enthusiastic. He was full of ideas. More importantly, he got stuff done. Quote, unquote, if Roanoke were ever to replicate Richmond and create our own monument avenue to honor our heroes, there ought to be a pedestal reserved for Ewart. Downtown Roanoke, indeed, all of Roanoke, would not be what it is today without him. And his relationship with Mayor Noel Taylor and their close relationship walking the streets, fixing benches and facades and all of downtown Roanoke and everything Bern Ewart has done for the last, not only in Design 79, but in the last 10 years, he has been certainly exemplary. And I think that he would be very deserving of that name. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ewart, for calling in for us. Great. Rachel Ruin. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I would like to suggest Reverend Wilkinson to name the park after Reverend Wilkinson. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of him. He was very influential in integrating Roanoke. Um, I just read an article about him recently. I'd heard his story, but I, I got a little bit more detail um, that he, uh, the, the city leaders at the time, uh, were following the, the governor's lead in resisting uh, integration or desegregation, I mean. And so Reverend Wilkinson put together a secret biracial committee. They met in secret and there were six uh, black leaders and six white leaders in the community. They were, I think mostly business, a lot of them were, were business leaders or business owners. Um, and they, they organized this and there were about a dozen businesses involved. And one day they just all went out and went into these formerly segregated businesses uh, the, with the black men and, and I believe the white men joined them as well. And the desegregation happened and the newspaper just reported that just like that, Roanoke is, is uh, desegregated. Um, I, got a, uh, in touch with someone on Facebook through the Roanoke, Virginia area history Facebook group. And Nathaniel Raymond Benjamin had actually posted that information about his grandfather. So that's, that was Reverend Wilkinson as his grandfather. And I asked Nathaniel um, if he would approve of naming, renaming Lee Plaza to honor his grandfather and, and he wholeheartedly agreed. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for calling in. Tiffany Jordan. Hello, can everyone hear me okay? All right, you wonderful. Can. Well, good um, Good evening, excuse me. Uh, my name is Tiffany Jordan. And uh, first I wanna thank the Equity and Empowerment Advisory Board for your presence for your commitment to social justice and for giving me the opportunity to speak on this very important subject tonight. It is with great honor that I submit Reverend James P. Beebe as a, as a renaming suggestion for Lee Plaza. With the help of his son, Mr. Timothy Beebe, I've constructed a short bio in order to share some background information on this man who was integral in creating um, an equitable hiring practice for the city of Roanoke. Reverend James Plummer Beatty was born to the late James H. and Jeannie Beatty in Kelly, North Carolina. He attended and graduated from Bladen Central High School in Elizabethtown, North Carolina, and spent two years in the United States Army as a medical corpsman, where he was honorably discharged in 1959. Reverend Beatty attended Winston-Salem State University, where he received his Bachelor of Science degree. He also has a master's of education from the University of Virginia. He has been married to the former Regina Johnson for the past 59 years and this union has been blessed with three children, Tina Renee, Darrell Alvin, and Timothy Tremaine. 
this union has even has been even more blessed with three grand, grandchildren, George, Celia, and Titus. He is an active member of the Roanoke chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, has served on countless boards throughout the community, and for 17 years pastored Bethel AME Church here in Roanoke, Virginia. Reverend Beatty started his career as a teacher and basketball coach for the Prince George County School System. After five years there, he moved to Roanoke City, and in 1973, he was hired with the City of Roanoke Human Resources Department. During his time there, he served as a human resource administrator and recruiter, working diligently to give Black people opportunities that had been previously denied. In 2002, after, two, after 29 years of service, he retired from the city of Roanoke. Since then, he has also served as the interim director and consultant of human resources for Roanoke City Public Schools. Growing up in a family of people who worked for the city of Roanoke, I heard the same story and name countless times, that Mr. Beatty was the reason why so many black people were able to be hired and get a job with the city of Roanoke. So I thought it would be only right to submit his name as a way of honoring a man who helped to play a pivotal role in championing the integration of the workforce of, city, of the city of Roanoke. Words cannot begin to express the service and dedication of that of Reverend James P. Beatty has displayed throughout his life. He has not only touched the hearts of those in his congregation, but also in those in, of those in the community. Thank you all so much. Thank you, uh, Tiffany, for, for calling in. We appreciate those comments. Gloria Manns. Gloria, can you hear us? She is with us. I asked her to unmute. Let me try this other one. She's in here twice. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? You need to turn down one of your devices, either your phone or your computer, because it sounds like you're on both. Can you mute one? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Much better. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. And I'm going to be a Good little evening. redundant here. I am here in support of naming, renaming Lee Plaza after Henry Lux. And as was stated before, she is a native of Rona, Virginia, who died at the age of 31 from cervical cancer. Um, at the time of her death, and researchers at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore realized that her cells were a little bit different. They lasted a little bit longer and they were they produced a little faster. And as a result of this, these cells were taken from her. Her family was not aware of this and they used this for research. And it's again, an example of how people many times are treated and and we think that this would be an honor for her to be honored here in Roanoke. And her cells were, I did not know this until I did some additional research, her cells were also used in the polio research. So it's my pleasure to recommend that Lee Plaza be renamed, renamed after Henrietta Lacks. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Gloria, for calling in. We appreciate those comments. Okay, we have several folks that called um, and they want to speak on both. So we're going to go ahead and, and have those speak and then finish in with the remainder of the comments. So we're going to um, start with Barbara Durick. Barbara, can you hear us? I just unmuted. So thank you very much. Learning how it's done. I think it on uh, very very appropriate name would be Freedom, Freedom Plaza or Freedom Square. I, I was on the committee that uh, established the Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial and part of that recommendation was for a Justice Square and a Freedom Walk. And the Freedom Walk was to recognize local people that had broken down barriers and build bridges between community 
but I think Freedom, Freedom Square or Freedom Plaza would be a, a perfect name. Be inclusive of everything. Thank, thank, thank you. you, Barbara. Did you have another, were you calling in on, an, on another um, matter as well? Because we have you on dual matters. Correct. I, I Go ahead. called in to speak on the other matter, but I didn't yes. think I'd get a chance to say that. So thank you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, this isn't regarding the plaza, but you right. like go ahead with your comments. Okay. For, well, I, want, the I, I want to thank the committee for addressing equity and empowerment in the city of Runnick. I have worked for more, more than 40 years to encourage city decisions to be valued on merit. I failed. I hope this committee is a success. I am Barbara Dirk. I go by Connect Now. I believe the city is a three-legged stool, uh, government, business, and strong neighborhoods supporting a foundation of trust and building on collaboration, my C words, collaboration, cooperation, coordination, and transparency to collectively move the city forward. I ask you to, to for under equity, to consider rebooting the Roanoke Neighborhood Advocates in all neighborhoods and valuing their input. I miss the gatherings where residents from all parts of the city could think together and claim shared goals. I would like to see a connection of all neighborhoods, reassess the sidewalk and bike lane program, budget monies to fix old sidewalks, build new connectors and realign streets so neighborhoods connect prioritize greenways, support clean air initiatives. I live in the second ring around the city center and the small particulate matter collects on my house and in my lungs and people that live in the city should not have their health endangered because of small particulate matter, mainly put out by public and pupil transit buses that are diesel fueled. Promote safe walking and bicycling to a neighborhood school as a healthy transportation alternative. Eliminate health care voids and food deserts. And, and that's in a lot of our neighborhoods. And this can be accomplished by investing in a transit system that has 24 seven extended hours. When people live, they need services and they can go by transit to a one-stop shop um, where, where they don't have to transfer to something else. And it's a, what would be a hub and offer a center for multicultural exchange. Roanoke can still provide a best destination oriented transportation hub. The hub should include an urgent care, a mini mart, financial institution, tourist information, Medical care, social services, everything that, that you would want to have for a one stop shop. Adjust neighbor, uh, ad ad uh, adjacent neighborhood buildings would hold um, doctor's offices and other, other places for, for use. Equity means to me that the people living in the city, not just the suits, should be asked what they think. And many of the suits that are doing a lot of the talking don't live in the city. The value of input or voice from persons without a computer or a smartphone is being overlooked. Revisit how we communicate and include people in public meetings. I know that, that um, I can give you examples of how, how I, I think that the Planning Commission and BZA, their schedule does not allow people that have um, tight work schedules to attend the meetings. And I've, I've been working to get those times changed so more people can be included and have their voice heard. Thank you again. Thank you again for addressing equity and empowerment. Again, I've worked at worked for more than 40 years to encourage city decisions to be, be um, based on merit. And I look forward to the success of this committee.
Thank you. Thank you, um, Barbara, for taking the time to call in and to share those comments. We appreciate it. Jordan Bell. Good evening. Um, can everyone hear me? Good evening. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I'll, um, I'll speak on the renaming of the plaza first. Um, I am glad and delighted and honored that we have gotten a history lesson tonight on the many important people and figures that come from Roanoke, Virginia. Um, but I would like to speak on a gentleman who is living 88 years old in Baltimore County, Maryland. Um, his name is William Bernard Robertson. Uh, William Bernard Robertson was born in Roanoke, Virginia, a Lucy Addison graduate. He was a forerunner from, in many areas. He was the first African American to be nominated by a major political party in the city of Roanoke, the first to serve on the administrative staff of, of a Virginia governor, the first to be selected as the Virginia JC's Outstanding Young Man in Virginia, and one of the first two African Americans to graduate from Radford University where he earned his master's degree. He earned two undergraduate degrees at Bluefield State College and served as a teacher, principal, and supervisor in the Roanoke City School System, Gilmer Elementary School to be exact. In 1969, he was asked to run for the Virginia House of Delegates and lost by a narrow margin. However, the newly elected governor appointed Robertson as the first African-American to serve on a governor's executive staff. He was able to make great enrolls in the employment of minorities in Virginia by virtue of this position. He is responsible for the hiring of the black state trooper of the first black state troopers, the first ranking black officials in the penal system, black toll takers, black ABC inspectors, and opened other state positions of, to people of color. After his service in Richmond, Robertson was appointed to the president's committee then called mental retardation by President Nixon. He was also appointed Peace Corps director in Kenya during the Ford administration and served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs under President Reagan. Following his federal service, Robertson worked as an international consultant serving as liaison between leaders of foreign governments and US government and business leaders. He retired from this career in 1995. Robertson was instrumental in forming a sister city relationship between Roanoke, Virginia and Kizamu, Kenya. He initiated the sister city relationship between Portsmouth, Virginia and Elder, Kenya. He is also founder of the sister city program between Reston, Virginia and Nairi, Kenya. The single accomplishment of which Mr. Robertson is most proud of is Camp Virginia JC a 90 acre year round camp serving children and adults with special needs located in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, about 30 minutes up 460. He founded this facility 40, over 45 years ago. During this period, over 45,000 people have been served. Robertson came out of retirement to head three, a $3 million capital campaign to ensure the perpetuity of Camp Virginia JC. While in the area, Roanoke's Virginia Western Community College also secured the services of Robertson to develop programming in an international relation. Beginning in July 2008, Robertson carried 38 of his students and 12 teachers to Slig and Van Buren Middle School's Man of Vision program and girls empowered by mentoring programs to Camp Virginia JC. So I suggest that the uh, Lee Plaza be renamed after William Bernard Robinson or after any individual that was named here tonight, Henrietta Lacks, Mr. Beatty, Raymond Wilkinson. Um, and I'd also like to add that Raymond Wilkinson's grandson created a website for his grandfather called rrwilkinson.org. Um, so that is my suggestion for Lee Plaza. Raymond Wilkinson, Mrs. Lacks, William Robinson, um, I think any name that we choose out of out of those individuals will will suffice. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate you. You're always a diplomat and I appreciate you being involved in the community and everything that you do. So thanks again for calling in. Thank you. Mastin McCorville. Mr. 
Ms. McCorkle, are you still there? Uh, he has dropped in the chat. He appreciates being able to observe the EAB in action and wish the board all the best, but I will not be speaking this evening. So he is passing on speaking. Okay. Lee DaCosta. Good evening. Can you hear me? We can. Excellent. Well, I should say it's Leah. Um, so not, not like the mayor's name, but it's Leah DaCosta. Um, I am happy to hear all the great recommendations, ensure that you will choose a great name. Um, I just wanted to speak to you and the subcommittee members um, to let you know about the program that I run because it is so important to the success of Roanoke. Um, so I'm gonna just read you what I wrote. I am the regional program manager of Roanoke Valley Allegheny Region 5 Adult Education. Region 5 is a consortium of the public school systems in the cities of Covington, Roanoke, and Salem and the counties of Allegheny, Botetourt, Craig, and Roanoke. So we are a large organization that does adult education um, all across this region and in that is included Roanoke City. Um, under the Department of Education, our purpose is to offer educational services for any individual over the age of 18 who wants to earn a GED or an adult high school diploma or improve English language skills or needs academic skills refreshers because they want to go to Virginia Western, for example, and they can't quite get through the placement test. Because we're state and federally funded, just like the school systems are, all of our services are free to adult students. Uh, some of our community partners include Virginia Western Community College, the Western Virginia Workforce Development Board, TAP, Goodwill, um, Blue Ridge Literacy, Roanoke Housing Authority, Roanoke City Schools, and many others that just want to make Roanoke a great place. Those of us in education believe wholeheartedly that learning empowers and equips all students to become the best versions of themselves possible and in turn impact their communities in a positive way. And I just wanted to um, let everybody know, we know that education is very important. The more you have the better your chances of a family sustaining wage, a self-sustaining wage. And we're doing everything we can to sort of bridge that gap. Um, so that's my commercial. I get no money for that. I mean, I get my salary, of course, but we're not profit. We're in the school systems. I just wanted everybody to know in those committees that we have services to give education to anybody over 18 who needs it. Everything is free. Go to our website, and that's www.region5adulted.com. So it looks like region5adulted.com. And I will take my leave of you then. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leah, for calling in with that information. Mr. Secretary, did you get all that information? Yes, ma'am. I think I, I got the uh, website and the basic uh, what she was Discussing. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Carla Ryan, anyone else? Thomas. Ms. Thomas? Ms. Thomas, can you hear us? You're still muted. Ms. Ms. Thomas hit star six. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, I'm calling regarding Peters um, and the surrounding areas of Peters Creek Road. I wanted to call because uh, I feel that Peters Creek Road is a full extension from Troutville all the way to Lewis Gale Hospital. You're literally going from Roanoke County to Roanoke City and the area is run down. 
There are no nice restaurants, no nice looking shopping areas, no healthy food options on this side of town. Um, as a person that has lived in other areas and other places, um, for some reason, this area does not um, have nice place. There's not even a nice coffee shop to go to. All the food options are all hamburgers to fried chicken. There's nothing, um, like I've said, um, of a nice, healthy food option. On um, the other side of town, per se, though, there are so many different types of uh, food options there. And so the reason why I'm calling is it seems like for some reason, Peters Creek Road is not utilized. And so I'm, I'd like to just call attention to that and see what we can do about that situation. Miss Thomas, as soon as you said, it seems like Peters Creek Road is what whatever it was, and the rest of it was broken up, and that was your important point. And I think I missed it. I don't know if anybody else did. Uh, yeah, I they're was, saying. Okay, did you did, did you hear me at all? Yeah, I, I heard you at all, but you said. Madam Chair, I could hear what what you said very clearly. So I. Got okay, okay, because because I I know a couple of the other members were looking at me saying they didn't understand it either. So that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thomas, for calling in. We appreciate those comments. Okay, thank you. That's all the speakers we have tonight. I just wanna say thank you for everyone that took the time to call in. I will note that we have gotten um, quite a few emails that will be forwarded on to the uh, committee and we will make sure that those are addressed as well and um, everybody gets a copy of those. So that's the end of our public hearing. I don't think there's anyone else. Um, we are now at um, item four on the agenda. And at this point, we don't have any reports unless there are some reports that, um, Mr. Powell, you have anything else you want to say? I don't have any reports and we will take this, this um, section of the agenda, um, item four in the future will be for you, your subcommittees to bring forward their updates and their reports. So at this point, we don't have anything. Yeah, Ms. White Boyd, the, the, only, the only thing I would add is just when, it, as far as those subcommittees, the intent I think at this point is um, there will be information forwarded to each each of the committee members um, that is uh, consistent across all of them. So they'll get that in the next few days. And then we'll look for a, a single meeting to bring all of the committees together at one time to kind of establish the, if you will, the ground rules and how it's gonna function and work. And then from that point forward, the committees will meet independently. So we'll have more information coming forward for those that are chairs, as well as for the members of those committees. And I want us to take this opportunity to say thank you for all of you that stepped up to be chairs and also all of you that I twisted your arm and bribed you and, and all of the above, because I know, I know it's a lot um, and I'm asking a lot. This is a lot, but I just want to say thank you. Um, it, it, it really uh, means a lot that you, you accepted that role as chair. And you, if you notice your committees are super packed with some awesome people and um, you'll have plenty of help. You'll have plenty of help in addition to the other people that, were not recommended for the subcommittees, but we hope will still, um, you know, stay involved with the rest of us. So, um, with that being said, we we uh, our next meeting will be October. Uh, October, right? We're just rolling right on through this thing, right? October, April first, April Fool's Day, and um, it would be Zoom as of right now. We're we're still Zoom, and if there are no further items on the agenda and if there's any other comments or any questions or anything, I want all hearts and minds cleared before I adjourn. Anything? Well, it is now 7.32. How about that for being on time? It is now 7.32 and the, the March 4th EEA meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See <laughs> you.